Portuguese or Spanish? Which one is more difficult? Uh, eu cheguei lá uh, em Nova York e não falava inglês ainda. Então, uh, essa parte foi um pouco complicada. Tinha um lado bom e ruim. Um lado bom que as coisas negativas eu não entendia nada, né? <risos> que a, a qualquer área era parecido impossível de recorrer. Né? Uma menina de Barranquilla, Colômbia, que começa em um, em um mercado em que não existia realmente apoio ao talento nacional, como há hoje, por exemplo, ao talento local. This is the question that we will explore together in this video. By watching it to the end, you will learn many tips that will help you master both of these two important Romance languages. As you probably know, difficulty always depends on the languages you already know. So let's consider the case of English speakers who have not studied any Romance languages yet. It is a tough question, since the two languages are very similar, lexically and grammatically. But there are differences that can make one language more challenging than the other. Even if we don't arrive to a clear winner in terms of difficulty, I want you to win in terms of gaining knowledge and insights into how Portuguese and Spanish are similar and different. Seeing how knowing English can even help you with a lot of vocabulary in both languages, getting an overview that will help you guide your studies. So in this case, for sure, the journey is more important than the destination. We will take a look at the following categories. Lexical similarity and differences, grammatical differences, phonetics and pronunciation, spelling and writing. First, let's take a look at grammatical gender. Why now? Because we will be looking at the noun endings, and doing so is the perfect way to introduce the cognates, similar words that exist in English, Portuguese, and Spanish. This is an excellent hack or shortcut to vocabulary building. Grammatical gender is a feature of many of the world's languages, where nouns are classified into genders, often including masculine, feminine, and sometimes neuter or other categories. About 25 to 30 percent of the world's languages employ some form of a grammatical gender system. So let's take a look at grammatical gender and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by the great number of cognates or similar words we will see in English, Portuguese, and Spanish. Here is a list that includes the vast majority of noun endings in Portuguese and Spanish. So you might wonder, how easily can we predict the grammatical gender of nouns from their endings? Let's discuss them one by one. Nouns ending in A are usually feminine, but there are some important exceptions in both languages. Let's take a close look. Here are some of the main exceptions. The day, o dia, el dia. The map, o mapa, el mapa. The planet, o planeta, el planeta. The climate, o clima, el clima. Note that all these words are similar to their English counterparts. In other words, they are close cognates across the three languages. Next, we have the equivalents for nouns ending in T-I-O-N in English. For example, action, a acción, la acción, education, a educación, la educación, decision, a decisão, la decisión, concentration, a concentración, la concentración, Organization, a organización, la organización. All these words are cognates in the three languages. According to the Free Dictionary's Word Finder, there are 13,113 words in the English language that end in T-I-O-N. Not all of them are cognates, of course, but thousands are. Next, we have nouns ending in D-A-D-E in Portuguese and D-A-D in Spanish. They are used for abstract nouns, often derived from adjectives. Examples include liberty, a liberdade, la libertad, necessity, a necessidade, la necessidad, equality, a igualidade, la igualidad, simplicity, a simplicidade, la simplicidad. Notice that you can get the meaning of all the words from just knowing English. There are hundreds of cognates with these suffixes, a great boost to abstract vocabulary in these languages. Nouns ending in T-U-D-E in Portuguese and T-U-D in Spanish are less common and used for abstract qualities or states. Both are feminine. Examples include 
attitude, a attitude, l'actitude, magnitude, a magnitude, la magnitude, altitude, a altitude, la altitude. Given the variations and the specific use of T-U-D-E in constructing abstract nouns, the list of direct cognates in this category is relatively small compared to those for I-T-Y, D-A-D-E in Portuguese, and D-A-D in Spanish. O is a common masculine ending in both languages, but exceptions exist. Examples include video, o video, el video, radio, o radio, el radio, studio, o studio, el studio. Exceptions to the rule in both languages include a foto and la foto, because foto is a shortened form of fotografia. Next, we have OR nouns in both Portuguese and Spanish, which are masculine. They are often used for agent nouns or professions. For example, actor, o ator, el actor, director, o director, el director, doctor, o doctor, el doctor. You can see that all these are cognates across the three languages. Nouns ending in L are masculine in Portuguese, but can vary in Spanish. Examples include hospital, o hospital, el hospital, festival, o festival, el festival, canal, o canal, el canal. We see examples of three Spanish words that are feminine, la señal, la capital, and en la sal. Most of the words are cognates with English. Nouns that end in M-A are masculine in both languages. They are often words of Greek origin. Examples include problem, u problema, el problema, theme, subject, u tema, el tema, system, u sistema, el sistema, language, u idioma, el idioma. Language stands out because it's not a direct cognate. The English word idiom shares a root with idioma and can be considered a cognate, albeit with a different, more specific meaning. Nouns ending in E in both languages are variable. Examples include coffee, u café, el café, hunger, a fome, el hambre, key, a chave, la llave. Most of these words are not cognates with English, but are between Portuguese and Spanish. The ending ista can be masculine or feminine depending on the referent. For example, artist, o artista, a artista, el artista, la artista, dentist, o dentista, a dentista, el dentista, la dentista, journalist, o jornalista, a jornalista, el periodista, la periodista. Finally, there are some nouns for which the gender is different in the two languages. For example, color, a cor, el color, art, a arte, el arte, pain, a dor, el dolor, team, a equipe, el equipo, milk, u leche, la leche. But for the most part, the genders of nouns in Portuguese and Spanish tend to be the same. When it comes to gender of nouns, they pose the same degree of difficulty. So after seeing all these cognates, it might not surprise you that about 89% of Portuguese and Spanish vocabulary is similar. But there are important differences. Here are some common everyday vocabulary that differ substantially between the two languages. Abacaxi, pinha, puxar, tirar, pegar, correr, guarda-roupa, armário, pia, fregadero, vassoura, escoba, caneca, taza, cobertor, Manta, travesseiro, almohada, cadeira, silla, tela, pantalla. Next, we should consider the regular transformations that take place between Spanish and Portuguese words. First, we have Spanish IE changing to Portuguese E. Tierra, terra, hierro, ferro, viento, vento, ciento, cento, miedo. Medo. Then we have Spanish UE changing to Portuguese O. Puedo. Posso. Cuento. Conto. Muerto. Moto. Fuerte. Foche. Puerta. Porta. Then we have Spanish initial H. Silent. Changing to Portuguese F. Hacer. Fazer. Hijo. Filho. Hablar. Falar. Arena. 
Farinha. Then we have the initial LL in Spanish, changing to CH in Portuguese. Yamar. Shamah. Yave. Chave. Yuvia. Chuva. Yeno. Cheio. Generally, the differences in difficult between Spanish and Portuguese vocabulary for English speakers is not large. Some may find Spanish slightly easier due to its pronunciation and the prevalence of Spanish in popular media and education system, which increases exposure. However, individual learning experience can vary widely based on personal background, exposure to the language, and learning environment. It is clear that knowing either language greatly facilitates learning the other one. In addition, both languages share many cognates with English. So now let's compare the grammar of the two languages. First, let's talk about sentence structure. Portuguese and Spanish both follow the subject, verb, object, SVO structure, making initial learning quite intuitive for speakers of English and other Romance languages. For example, I eat apples translates to eu como maçãs in Portuguese, eu como manzanas in Spanish. Verb conjugations in both languages are also similar, with both requiring the learner to navigate through regular and irregular verbs across many different tenses. However, this is where we start to see the slightly greater complexity of Portuguese emerge, particularly with the personal infinitive, a unique feature that allows the infinitive form of the verb to be inflected according to its subject. For example, the phrase, it's important for us to speak, is é importante nos falarmos, compared to es importante que hablemos in Spanish, which uses the subjunctive mood in this case. Portuguese and Spanish both use the subjunctive mood extensively to express wishes, doubts, uncertainties, or hypothetical situations. A distinctive feature of Portuguese is the future subjunctive tense, which does not exist in Spanish. The future subjunctive is used for actions that are anticipated to happen under certain conditions. It appears in important clauses after cuando, meaning when, conditional clauses after se, meaning if, and concessive clauses after ainda que, meaning even if, among others. For example, cuando fores mais velho, vais entender. Future subjunctive. When you're older, you will understand. In Spanish, it would be, Cuando seas mayor, lo entendrás. And that's the present subjunctive. This unique tense adds a layer of subtlety to Portuguese, allowing speakers to articulate future possibilities with a precision that Spanish, with its use of other tenses to express similar ideas, does not directly replicate. Now let's look at phonetics and pronunciation. Both languages have multiple dialects that vary significantly in pronunciation, rhythm, and even in the use of certain phonemes. So here I will focus on general tendencies and notable phonetic features without diving in too deeply to the specificities of regional dialects. So first we have vowel sounds. Spanish has five clear vowel sounds which are relatively stable across different accents. The simplicity in vowel pronunciation can make Spanish somewhat easier to learn from a phonetic perspective. Portuguese, on the other hand, has a more complex system with at least seven to nine vowel sounds, depending on the dialect, including nasal vowels that are not present in Spanish. This complexity can present a higher initial challenge for learners. Brazilian Portuguese has open and closed vowel sounds, and their distinction can affect both pronunciation and meaning. This phonetic characteristic can also lead to minimal pairs, where the meaning of the word changes based on whether the vowel is open or closed. For example, the O in avó is closed, and it means grandfather. Well, the O in avó is open, and it means grandmother. Then we have consonant sounds. Spanish pronunciation of consonants is somewhat similar and more consistent. For example, the Spanish R is rolled, but there are clear rules about when it is strongly trilled, like in perro, and when it is tapped, like in caro. Portuguese has a wider variety of consonant sounds, including several, that do not exist in Spanish, such as the soft 
G or the nasalized consonants. The pronunciation of R can vary across Portuguese dialects from a guttural sound in European Portuguese to a more rolled or tap sound in Brazilian Portuguese. So finally, let's look at spelling and writing. Comparing the spelling between Spanish and Portuguese reveals both similarities and differences that can indeed impact comprehension and pronunciation, especially for learners transitioning between the two languages. While many words can be spelled similarly or identically in both languages, their pronunciation can differ significantly, with Brazilian Portuguese softened consonants being a notable factor. Let's explore this aspect further. Brazilian Portuguese often softens consonants that are pronounced more sharply in Spanish, which can lead to misunderstandings or the need for a closer listen by Spanish speakers. Thus, they cannot guess the spelling from the sound of some words. For example, the word gente in Spanish is spelled the same way in both languages and has the same meaning. So in Spanish, the G followed by an E or an I is pronounced with a softer sound, similar to the English H in hero, or the J in the Spanish jalapeno. So, gente is pronounced gente. In Brazilian Portuguese, when the G is followed by an E or an I, it is pronounced with a soft G sound, similar to the J sound in the word measure, or the S sound in vision. Furthermore, the D and the T before I and E are softened in Brazilian Portuguese, sounding closer to the English J in G, and the soft CH sound. So it's pronounced GENCHI. It's difficult to imagine that GENCHI is spelled the same way as GENTE. The main factors that contribute to the difficulty of spelling in Portuguese for learners, especially when compared to Spanish, include phonetic complexity. Portuguese phonetics are more complex than those of Spanish, featuring a wider range of vowel sounds, including nasal vowels that are not present in Spanish. Then we have diacritic. Portuguese uses diacritical mark more extensively than Spanish does. These marks indicate stress, vowel quality, such as open or closed sounds, and nasalization. Finally, we have orthographic depth. Portuguese has a deeper orthographic depth compared to Spanish, meaning there's a less direct correlation between how words are spelled and how they are pronounced. So, in conclusion, whatever language you choose to learn first, you're setting yourself up for a rewarding journey that not only broadens your linguistic capabilities, but also deepens your cultural insights. So, dive in, embrace the challenges, and enjoy the journey of becoming bilingual or trilingual or amazing polyglot.